Okay. So I think we are in business. Hey folks, uh, <clears throat> it's just a little late night live stream. I was going to do this significantly earlier tonight, but I sat down at my computer and got the phone out and there was Scrambled O live streaming. So <laughs> I watched him for a little while instead. But now he's done. He's gone to bed. Poor guy's been sick. He's got a cold or something. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about, about this. That little axe I put up. Was it yesterday or the day before? Uh, here's the thing. I didn't buy it from moremaker.com. Uh, I've been using moremaker.com because that's where most people would buy it from. There's no reason to go anywhere else. Uh, the only reason I did was because the place where I discovered this axe was at bespokepost.com. And in fact, I actually only discovered it because someone on the Axe Junkies, oh, excuse me, someone on the Axe Junkies Facebook group put up a link to it and said, What do you guys think? Is this a good axe? And so that's where I started reading up on it. And it Seem that anyone who's got one likes the steel. Um, so that's how I discovered this axe. And it was for the same price as the one at Moore Maker. It came with like a mystery black box. So I figured what, you know, what the hell. Uh, judging from what I saw, looks like I got the last one at Bespoke Post because it's all sold out now and it was sold out like right after I ordered this one. So, what else, right? But, um, I'm gonna do like an actual vid on this, as I said. Um, right now I'm sort of in the run up to Christmas, so I'm not getting out, I'm too busy doing other things, but I am gonna take it out, knock it around, and like like I said in, in, my, uh, in my other video, one thing that I, one thing that I can't figure out is what the hell is it for? Look at how small that is. And I, I said that in my video, but just to, earlier today, which is one of the reasons I decided to make tonight's video is, tonight's live stream, sorry, I've got to be exact, is because like, oh, so much brand new leather in this house right now. This is a saddle cruiser size. This is literally a saddle cruiser. The model name of this Norland double is saddle cruiser. It's not an original handle, so I don't I think the, the original handle is a little shorter, but what else? No matter what. This is really small. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you guys have all voted, by the way. I'm gonna leave the, the, you know, the poll open for, you know, probably a week all told. There we go. Um, so, I wanna show you what this thing came with. And won't come with if you buy it from moremaker.com. What I'll probably do is, before I make my, my big video, I'll just see if Bespoke Post has any left. You know, or if sold out there means it's gone, gone. Do you guys know anything about Bespoke Post? Um, it's sort of like a, a website for guys to buy cool stuff. But anyways, here's what it came with. Do I have everything here? First was $10 off your next Bespoke Post purchase, provided it's over 75 bucks US. Too bad about that 75 bucks thing because I almost bought my wife a Christmas gift that was going to be 30 bucks US plus shipping, blah blah blah. It came out to 49 bucks US. But I mean, even then, this is before shipping, right? Um, cufflinks, little golden cufflinks. I gotta tell you, I'm not a fan of the gold or the brass. I, I kind of like copper and I really like bronze, but I like silvery metals more, more than I like golden ones. But they're pretty solid little, little. I think they're brass. Solid little cufflinks, classy and minimalist. I have a couple of shirts that require cufflinks. 
So it's nice to not just have the stupid plastic ones that come with shirts like that. Julio and Jack Drifter. What this is, is a, um, it's a solid cologne. It's like a waxy cologne. You put it, you know, the usual places. I like the smell. And what I like about the solid cologne is it's not, it doesn't punch you in the nose the way some of the spray ones do. You know, I have some spray ones that I never wear because it's like, oh, I just gassed myself. Oh, it's got ingredients on the back. I didn't notice that. Jojoba or jojoba, I think it's jojoba. Shea butter, beeswax, and fragrance. Fragrance. Okay. Uh, let me just see. If anyone's commenting, no one's commenting yet. Oh, there's a couple of people. Did you guys all watch Scramble Do's uh, live stream? I like that guy. I'd love to go camping with that guy one day. Him, uh, Joe's Neon, Joe Robinette. A lot of guys I'd like to go camping with. Yeah. Okay, it came with deodorant. Minerals and sage, non-irritating. Oh, sorry, antiperspirant. Let's see. I can never get these plastic things off. Beast. Well, it sure smells like sage and minerals. <laughs> and it's dove, so you know it's good for the skin. What else? Socks. Italian socks. The company's name is Etiquette. They're very classy. I'll wear them next time I'm wearing a suit. What else? Oh yeah, and then this. Playing cards. However, this is called the Spy Deck. I haven't opened this since I got all this stuff because I wanted to open it with you guys. So what do you think? Should we check it out? No one's commenting yet, eh? Sorry. What if I make the comment? Scrambled, uh, his, the subject matter, I don't believe it. No, no, it's okay, I got it, I got it. No, don't, I don't got it. Oh, good thing I never picked up smoking, because getting this, you know that plastic thing? Tyler Rodriguez, you are the first to comment, because my comment doesn't count. Ah, there we go. Here you go, playing cards. My sister, for, man, years and years, most of our life, my sister was like the playing card maven, man. She had all kinds of, she loved to play cards, blah, blah, blah. Then a few years ago, it's like she got married and became a family person. And the same has happened to me, by the way. Things changed a little bit. So a few years ago, like, well, a few, 10 years ago, I bought a pack, like a set of, I think, three packs of medieval European Christmas cards. Um, I caught a glimpse of the tree behind me. No. <laughs> I'm going to start that again. Take two. Uh, so about ten years ago, I bought this set of, like, th I think it was three or four, like, medieval European style playing cards. You know, so really plain, old-fashioned art. You know, the... the, the uh, the recto had nothing on it because 400 years ago playing cards had nothing on the other side. Oh, I wish I had nails to get this open. What's up, Tyler? What's going on? You getting snowed on? No, you're not getting snowed on, are you? We're under like 14 centimeters right now, I think. Or at least that's what the radio said we, sh we could expect. So apparently the object of these cards, wow, totally black, very spy-like. The object of these cards, apparently, the spy deck, is that they, it's got like spy stuff written on it. Yeah, here's the, the Joker. The spy deck, paying homage 
to classic espionage through anecdotes, secret messages, and other clandestine persuasions. Inside, you'll find information on how to cipher and decipher codes, speak with a more with more refined spy vocabulary and tactics that will help you be successful wherever your next mission takes you i shit you not Ooh. i don't think i'm monetizing so i guess that didn't really matter i shoot you not to keep it in the, the spy tyler's under a little bit of snow yeah i guess it, in american we're at almost a foot Okay, the other joker is the capitals, currency, elevation, time zone, and calling code of the capitals of several important nations, including, but not um, restricted to, Russia, the U.S., Pakistan, Israel, India, France, they got China, they, even got, they don't have Canada, but they have Australia. Bitches. Okay, what do we got here? Ace, Caesar cipher. In cryptography, the Caesar cipher is a method of encryption where letters are substituted for others. In the ROT13 Caesar cipher, letters are rotated 13 places and then substituted. And then it's got like an example of how you do it. What do you think? I don't know if, I, if, I, if it's really showing up. I don't know, I'm not gonna go through all 52 of these because that would bore everyone. So that was the Ace of Spades. The Ace of Clubs is a list of the world's top intelligence agencies. So what do we got? CIA is number one. Uh, Pakistani ISI is number two. The Mossad is number three. MI6. MI6. It's a very good one, you were saying. Uh, then MSS, oh, that's the Chinese one, Russian, India, German, France, and Australia again. These cars are probably made in Australia. Code breaker, oh no! Ace of Diamonds, it's in code! I don't know if, am I holding these up well enough for you guys to see what's going on? Vesper Martini. Shaken, not stirred. You know, it's funny because uh, when I was working in a bar, uh, we, we always just made martinis the way, you know, the way they're made in a post-James Bond world. But the fact is, martini traditionally has been stirred. Not shaken. See these cards? I'm de-virginizing the deck. Poppin' his cherry. That's a terrible thing to say. I feel crass. Um, and like, you know, you'd go to a, a party and so, you know, the host would make a pitcher of martini and like four glasses and just pour it out over ice or whatever, you know? I keep looking at this thing. And you know, since we're talking about the size of it, and I'm going to talk about this more in my review video. Before this thing arrived, my smallest axe was my little teensy weensy wetterlings. That's a pretty small axe. I mean, really, that's a pretty small axe. Grand Spurs makes a really tiny one, but this, this axe is pretty small. It's funny, now that it's all oiled up, it doesn't it doesn't look quite as mirror-like. But man, I have worked my butt off on this bit. Um, and I kind of feel that this is my favorite axe. It's not my best axe, but this was my first serious axe. This was my first like big ticket axe. Um, and it's the one I've had the longest. Of course it is, it was my first, anyway. Pretend I didn't just do something that dumb. But it's so, you, like it's, you, I, I have used this in the forest. I've mostly like, mostly kindling rather than taking down a tree. But it's a perfect camp axe size. I, I've used it for carving spoons because it's also a really good size for, for carving. You know, like you don't have a uh, big handle sort of knocking around and maybe losing your control due to that. Um, 
it's a good axe for uh, using with with my daughter because uh, what we still do right now I mean she's not wailing away and stuff yet I'll hold an axe and she'll bump on the back of it with with a baton but because it's so small I don't have to worry about her walking around and like knocking the back of the ham the hell or anything you know this is a great little axe but it's bigger than this one look at that this one bit axe is has a longer head than this two bit axe how crazy is that just how crazy is that I don't know I just uh, man I don't know what I don't know what it's for <laughs> that's the thing but one thing I do like about it is this really old school um, sheath I think I may just uh, strap that one on my sheath and wear it around town just to say I can I like it I like it I, don't, I mean, I don't know if I like it enough for this to become my main axe or anything. Once I've used it a bit, I'll let you know what I think about it. But I'm very intrigued. And i it's funny, I sent the company a bunch of questions like I think two days ago, and I had my answers this morning. Yeah, so it's like... Boom, fast. And it was, I mean, it's a family run company, so it was actually Mr. Moore who answered my question. All that will come to bear when, I've, when I'm ready to shoot my video. So here's the thing. Axe, right? And then... Yeah, Tyler, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I know. And you know what, Tyler? I think... If I ever have the chance and the money to get one of these Norlands that's still red, because this one's been used a lot. Like, you, you can really tell just by looking at it that this, this axe has been well-loved. But if I can get one that's <clears throat> still got the red and, like, the original handle on and stuff, I would probably spend big money on that. You know, just, just to have one. Because I have wanted a double for so long. The fact that I got two of them in the same month is crazy. <clears throat> I mean, I would like to have a full-size double, but I am a fool who sort of fell for the Norland thing, you know. Um, I'm not much into Hudson's Bay heads, so you know, I'm not willing to just buy any Norland that comes through, and especially because they're expensive, man. They're more expensive than they should be, to be honest with you. You know. But anyways, what I was going to say is, so foresty thing deodorant cufflinks um, whatever that stuff's called cologne and playing cards seems weird right well that's because it is but it's because bespoke posts like motto or, or whatever is um, stuff for guys who give a damn or something like that it, it's like it's a men's you know, it's kind of like cool material or whatever. Like, it's stuff for guys. <clears throat> and this axe is not... The image of this axe is not one that is free of hipsterism completely. And um, I say that as someone who kind of likes the little, the little guy. But I wonder how many people who bought this axe have it, like, in their truck or their their rucksack versus how many of them you know have an axe on the wall as a decor piece you know I, there's, I, I, there's no way I can find that out right because it's not like we keep stats on who buys an axe and you know throws it in a drawer or you know buys an axe as a decor piece I keep thinking of like you know Casey Neistat how he has that axe near near his door behind him in his studio and had the only time I ever saw him take that axe off the wall was to was to bust up 
yet another Canon camera that had let him down. But it's like companies like uh, Best Made and stuff, you know, cater to to the to that side of the market, you know. Like hugely expensive. You know, take a council tool, do a custom paint job on the handle and sell it for like 300 bucks. Yeah, okay. Tell you what, sell me a council tool, I'll paint it up for you. I'll sell it to you for 200 bucks. Well, I guess if it's a velvet cut, I can't really do that, but anyway. I do wish I had started a company like that, though, because then I would be at least playing with the kind of stuff I like for a living, you know? Uh, in the comments below, because I'm going to leave this video up, at least for a while. I'm not going to pull, like, a scrambled and take it down as soon as it's done. I mean, I, I understand wanting to do that because, you know, it's a live stream. Why would you leave it up after it's no longer live? But I, you know, I kind of like hearing from you guys. You know, and if I leave the video up and I ask a question like this one, how many of you guys, like, play a lot of cards? How many of you guys are real card sharks? Cause to me, cards, 98% of the time, if I break, take out a, a pack of cards, I was about to tell a lie. Outside of hunting season, um, because like <clears throat> when it's hunting season and I'm sitting out there with, with my uh, with my father-in-law, you know, and it's the sun's gone down and there's a radio that gets one station, which is uh, whatever the radio de Laurentide. It's a sick uh, shoot. I don't remember the call sign, but it's you know it's like a typical top forty francophone station, you know. So there's that one. Oh, look at that. Come on, guys. you got to do a better printing job than that. Look at that big old smudge. And that's, that's ink. That's, you know, this free box of stuff is letting me down. How dare you make a printing error. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, like, when we're sitting out there in the bush and there's nothing to do, you know, we play a lot of yum. You know, or some cards or whatever. But, I mean, aside from that. Sweeping for bugs. I gotta do that, because I am that important. People checking me out. People watching. A little Morse code action. That's the Yesteryear's technology. They've taken the Morse code right out of the... Right out of the rule book. The marine uh, rule book. You know, they don't do the Morse anymore. Okay, so Tyler, um, I was gonna say, yeah, you don't really play cards too often. You pronounce that as euchre? Is that what that? I've I've seen it written, but I've never heard it. Is it euchre? Because living where I do, I would. Uh, it's euchre. Because <laughs> you know, but yeah. Aside from you know when I'm sitting at the hunt camp, cards come out. And I'm playing solitaire. Sorry, patience to those of us who are. Uh, Hey, Simon, come on back. Sorry, guys, my daughter gave me a wicked head cold. So if I'm snorting and stuff, I'm not doing blow. I'm actually ill. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I take these out to play patience, right? Tuck, 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 tuck. I almost never play cards with someone else. <clears throat> but I, I like the history behind playing cards. I like, I like the process that resulted in the designs we have today, you know? Tyler, when you said that I said it how you say it, was it the first time? E Euchre? I'm watching for your answer, big guy. I was like, Tyler's ignoring me, but I, I forgot that there's so much lag. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. Euchre? Yeah, I like the history that sort of went into what the designs are, you know? And the... Euchre, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks, buddy. 
Anyway, so that's my spy deck. It's like a deck of cards that's more of a conversation piece. You know what I'm saying? There we go. So today, I, uh, man, I did something suburban. I'm getting old. And uh, last, last winter, this is the first place I've ever lived where I've had a driveway. Actually, this is the first place I've ever lived where I've had a car. No, I got my car in, in the last place we lived, but um, we didn't have a driveway. And when we bought this house, it's the first house I've ever bought, and it comes with a driveway. And here's the thing. Every time there's a massive snowfall, the Ville de Montréal, I shouldn't have said that, the, the city, the city of Montreal, their workers, their tractors and stuff, sweep by clearing the street and leave this huge pile of, of this bank of snow right across the bottom of the driveway. Um, sometimes it's not necessarily that high, but like it's like six feet wide or whatever. And then last summer, oh, and we have new neighbors who are here from, I think, France or Madagascar or something. So last winter was their first experience of a Montreal winter. And they had this little Volkswagen and uh, like a little plastic shovel, like one of those, you know, single width ones. And so, you know, a couple of times I came out and there was the, that poor guy standing there with his little shovel and I'd be like, qu'est-ce que tu fais avec ça là, putain? And so I'd like go over and help him uh, shovel and stuff. But man, it's tough. Like, because the, the snow gets really hard packed, so you're breaking through the snow. And moving. Anyway, so coming up to this winter, when I finally got a non-freelance gig, uh, I went out and bought the second cheapest snowblower that... Uh, Home Depot has. I feel so cheesy just saying that because it's, it's a driveway. I don't have a back 40 or a schoolyard, but anyway. So tonight, because we're, we're getting heavy snowfall, I think we're at a foot or something. Hold on, I'm just going to go see what we got. Yeah, it's pretty snowy out there. <clears throat> anyway, so this winter I was like, to hell with that. I'm getting a snowblower. So today was my first time using it. And it is nice to be sitting here without a sore back and shoulders. Because, uh... The radio keeps telling us that apparently this winter is going to be savage. Which makes me so happy. I have two winter coats. <clears throat> one is a North Face, uh, which I've had for a long time. And one is an Arcturix, which I've had for less long, but still quite long. And the Arcturix, one of the zippers is blown and the, like it's sort of fraying down along here. So they have a, a like a, a lifetime warranty on certain aspects, but not others. So it's in getting the zippers replaced, but they're not going to touch this. Strangely, my North Face has no problem with fraying. And considering the difference in price between the two, that may uh, that may inform my purchasing decision next time. Let me tell you. Um, so much, the Arcturix is in for repairs, and it's a warmer coat, and it's a nicer coat. And so they took it, I guess I brought it in last month. I was going to bring it in earlier, but the, the Arcturix store downtown was, was being uh, renovated. I said, okay, thanks, I'm going to send it. You should have it back in six to eight weeks. So I'm going to get back in February. Well, no. February's gonna be freaking cold this year. But like, it's going to Vancouver, dude. It's not going to Singapore. Six to eight weeks, give me a break, man. So, the bottom of your sleeves are fraying on me, not under warranty. The zipper gave out on me, under warranty. And it takes like two months to get this, this coat back from Vancouver. 
the hell did I give you guys all that money for? And, funny thing, here, here's how I got this coat. My wife gave it to me in $100 gift cards over the course of several birthdays and Christmas. Because uh, at that stage in our relationship, you know, she was new at her job, newish at her job. And um, we were, look, we were young, man. So I, I went in with all my, my cards to buy the coat. And I, you know, I, was, I like this coat, but like, it's not an inner shell and an outer shell and a removable hood the way I'm used to with, with my North Face. And I said, why, you know, and he said, that's not our, de our design philosophy. And I immediately kind of, oh, my back got up and I was like, oh. Oh, because he was being a bit of a snoot about it. And so I said to him, you know, I t your design philosophy is less important to me than the fact that my North Face, which was 500 bucks, I can use in the dead of winter or in spring or in fall. Or on a day when it's kind of rainy but kind of warm. And this Arcturix, which I'm buying today, is a one-trick pony. And I said, you know, if I wasn't paying with, you know, flip all these cards, you would not be getting my business. Because design philosophy of my ass, you're, the consumer wants something that you are not prepared to give. You know? It's a really nice coat. I'm not, I'm not sorry that I have it or anything, but, you know, if the bottom of the sleeves are fraying, and my cheaper North Face isn't doing that, then I uh, got a couple of questions. But that's the thing, you know, with technical gear is that it's not necessarily robust. It's all aimed at very specific contexts. Hey, I should keep an eye on the, uh, the comments. Uh, Euchre, Greater Montreal area, should receive anywhere between 20 and 40 centimeters. Started early this morning and should last up to Thursday, yep. Um, here's an interesting thing. Uh, sorry, I'm just keeping it. An exchange students. Uh, okay. Oh, Simone, you got a snowblower too, eh? I bet you yours is gas, though. You you go way higher octane than I do. Mine mine is the cheapest. It's like electric. You know, it's not super strong. Or anything, but it's just it. I had to buy. Affordability trumped everything, provided it doesn't die on me this winter. It's fine, you know. Um. So, I don't have my winter tires on yet, and for those of you who don't live in Quebec, as of Friday, I can be ticketed for not having my my winter tires on. Um. So I took my car in at seven thirty this morning. Well, drop drop the squirt off at school at seven thirty, booted it down. Uh, down the hill, and the thing is, I live at the top of a of an incline. Uh, got to the the tire place, ran in, said, "You got to help me." He said, "We're already full up for today." I'm sorry, dude. Shit. Uh, I just swore on YouTube. If I was monetizing this, they would have a coronary and demonetize it immediately. Which they did, by the way, to my gift guide. It's remonetized again, but I was like, dude, you two, get it together, man. Get it together. Where was I? Oh, yeah, so I still don't have my winter tires on. It's just getting worse out there. And today, on my way, I don't remember if I was going there or back home, I slid halfway through an intersection. And I live... Uh, Hey, Paul's here. How's it going, buddy? I was just bitching about the fact that I tried to get my wind, my snow tires on today and it didn't work. And we're, we're under heavy snow right up until Thursday. And I'm legally obligated to have my snow tires on by Friday. And I slid through an intersection on my, on my way to, be, to get that done today. It just hasn't been the best of days. 
not the best of days at all. Anyways, I ended up working from home because uh, I couldn't get in. And most of my team couldn't get in either, so I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> uh, Simone, no, I don't. If I had rims on my tires, it would be a non-issue. But here's the other thing. <clears throat> because I'm scrapping this car in spring, I didn't want to... Like, I needed new winter tires. But I'm not spending on new winter tires for a car that I'm going to scrap. Because even though I know what size the tires are, I don't know what size the next car I'm going to get is. Right? So... I bought some second-hand out in Centro Stash, uh, drove out to get them because <clears throat> I kept waiting for like Canadian Tire or Gordon's Goodyear to get in their like affordable tires in my size. And I kept going back and I kept going back and I finally just called them both up and neither of them are getting them this year. And again, we're done, sir. Crap. So I went and I bought these used, whatever they are. Um, but because, like, as you guys know, I'm single dadding right now, I can't just flit off to the store whenever, right? Like, tonight, you know, I've got a six-year-old in bed. Um, <clears throat> my wife should be home tomorrow night, so I'll go Thursday morning, like, early. Like, 6.30 or some damn thing. Uh... <clears throat> No, mine are 14. They're uh, 195, 70, 14. Which is funny because the Camry has a 15 inch uh, option, or had at least in 98 when mine was made. But... <clears throat> Paul just bought snow tires for the first time in his life a couple of weeks ago. Mon ami, let me tell you, if you lived here, that would not be your situation. <clears throat> ah, Tyler's out of here? All right. Have a good one, mister. If I don't speak to you, uh, if I don't do another live stream before, before Christmas, then happy holidays, or happy Christmas, or happy Hanukkah, or Christmas, whatever you may <laughs> like to hear. Yeah, Simo, and my, my, what I want my next what I want my next car to be is uh, the Jeep Renegade. It's not going to be, but that's what I would like to be getting. Um, I may get like a Prius C or something in the meantime. Uh, Toad Sage ninety four. Hi. How's it going, Mister? Where are you in here from? Uh, but yeah. Yes, yeah, Simo, that's the, yeah. I want my next car to be four-wheel drive. I want it to, you know, to have good, strong tires on it. Um, you know, the, uh, oh, Paul, you want to see what that is? Oh. Right there. What I have to do is put more, more water in the aquarium. Kentucky. I've never been to Kentucky, Todd. I used to have a girlfriend from Ohio, but I mean, she moved around a lot. It seems like in the States, you guys move around a whole lot. She had lived in Ohio. She had lived in, when I met her, she was living in the Bronx. Not Kentucky, but actually it might've been her, uh, her family had a, a ranch. It might have actually been in Kentucky. In the south, anyway. Because her sister was in like equine science and her family bought a ranch and they were running a ranch. I'll tell you what, Paul. Constantly running water sounds make me a little tense too because... Uh, we had three major appliances fail or almost fail on us, uh, one of which was the dishwasher. And I have a friend. It's funny, the way we ended up with the contractor to redo this entire floor when we bought this house was one of our friends um, had something go in her dishwasher and just flood the basement, just boom, you know. Everything was wrecked. The walls, the, the, the kitchen floor, because it just everywhere and, and down. And it was like, 
I don't know what it uh, it blew a pipe or something. So then when when this dishwasher started giving us trouble, I was like, oh god, we've got to got to call, got to make it, uh, got to make it right. And uh, at the same time, the microwave just stopped working, like absolutely blew, and we were having some trouble with the cooktop, and it's just like call everybody and they all came on the same day miraculously and fixed everything but I still like at the back of my mind I've always got this stress about dishwasher please don't give up on me don't flood my damn basement because you know my bases are down there <laughs> you know yeah. oh. oh that's the wife All right, I just got a call from the... Whoa, Toad, you're going to build a homestead? You're going to go full-on Wrangler Star? Is that what you're going to do? I would love to, to homestead. It's just not in the... in the uh, Not in the cards in this lifetime. Do you know... The things in my life. Job, family, stuff like that. But man, I would love to be a homesteader. You know? I don't know where you'd go to homestead in Canada. Probably somewhere in Alberta. Maybe parts of BC. Saskatchewan. You know. I, you could probably fit a homestead in here in Quebec. Or maybe in Ontario or something. But it's like. We're a lot more settled than out west are. You know. Like the homesteading thing is. It's more of a. There's more of a western. Mystique to it I guess. You know. But yeah, I'd like to do that. And I would YouTube the hell out of it, man. I would love to be at this at the uh, the the spot in my YouTubing where uh, you know where you could just YouTube the whole process and let that be your your cash cow. <laughs> Simon, you've homesteaded in Quebec, really? Where? I keep trying to like. I guess anywhere where you can put a farm, you can homestead. I mean, duh, but... Like, the frontier aspect of it, we, we're, we're way too late for here, you know? I'm just... Just making sure I haven't miss, missed anyone here. Oh, there's the wife again. Okay. She wants me to take a bunch of pictures and send them to her, so I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out for tonight. Um, maybe I'll try to live stream one more time before before the Christmas rush. Or I'm not sure. Um, I definitely like doing it, but I also have videos planned. You know. Oh, you owned an acre in Bas Saint Laurent. Man, it's nice out there, man. Yeah, you're right. Wrangler Star did start late, and he and his his wife, they got out from under a pile of debt of debt and everything, to, as part of that plan. Um, my wife's profession would not allow her to commute from that far out of town, though. And also, if we move out of Quebec, she has to redo part of her certification, so it's. It's, it's awkward. <laughs> All right. I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I'll speak to you guys later.